Over the past few years, a ton of people have taken up woodworking and crafting as either a hobby or a way to generate extra income. And that's great, but whether you're a seasoned professional or somebody that's just starting out, safety is something that everybody should be concerned with throughout the entirety of a project. Now when we think about safety, we usually think about glasses and gloves and masks, things that keep us from losing our important bits. However, a recent Reddit post reminded me that there can be some not so obvious hazards that can have some devastating consequences. The story goes something like this. You're finishing up a piece of decoration or furniture and applying that last coat of stain or oil. You toss that soaked rag into the trash can, flip off the lights, and head to bed. Within a few hours, you wake up to the smell of smoke or a beeping alarm, and you run out to find your trash can, your workbench, or your entire garage up in flames. Now, these are the lucky ones. Oil rag fires have taken entire homes and, unfortunately, more than a few lives along with them. Now, the reason that this happens is many popular finishing products contain drying oils, which harden to give your project a protective finish. Now, this is due to a process called oxidation, and it's a bunch of nerdy chemistry stuff, but the key takeaway is that this process is exothermic, which means it releases heat as it happens. Now, whatever you've applied this oil to has enough surface area to effectively dissipate that heat, so you're not gonna set anything you're making on fire. The danger comes with this. Remember that rag that we balled up and tossed into the trash can? But when we ball it up, as it dries, all of that heat is trapped inside and has nowhere to go. It builds up over time and eventually gets so hot it'll light itself on fire. Now, we're gonna talk about how to properly dispose of those rags, but first, we're gonna see if we can make it happen. We're going to test out three popular finishes here. We've got Minwax, Dark Walnut Stain, Danish Oil, and Boiled Linseed Oil. Now, each of these is used differently depending on what you're looking for in a finished product, but they're all commonly applied using a cotton rag. We also have some piles of rags here, which I've gone ahead and soaked with their respective finish. We're gonna to toss them into these metal pans here and see which ones self-combust and just how long it takes. Now I'm gonna be here to monitor these and I've got a fire extinguisher on standby. I've also got this infrared thermometer that we're gonna to use to check the buildup periodically. Everything potentially combustible has been moved far away, so let's see what happens. One eternity later. So I was kind of worried that this whole thing was gonna be kind of a bust. I've been checking on this every 30 minutes and 30 minutes ago we were still at room temperature and now you can see that it's getting up there. We'll let this thing keep going and see how long it takes to catch on fire. All right, so we're at a little over the five hour mark and we have flames. I'm gonna throw some baking soda on this and douse it in water and get this thing taken care of before it gets out of control. The other two are still at room temperature. We're gonna let them keep going and see if we can get anything out of them at all. Now, I let the Danish oil and the stain go for about another five-ish hours, but neither of them showed any increase in temperature. Now, what's going on here is that the linseed oil is the main culprit in most of these fires that we've heard about. Things like Danish oil and oil-based stains can contain a mixture that includes linseed oil. This is manufacturer-specific and can vary from product to product. Unless you dig into the technical information on each product, there's really no way to tell which ones contain the linseed oil. So it's best to just assume that every oil-based finishing product may contain linseed oil and you need to dispose of it properly. So if these things are little ticking time bombs, how do we dispose of them properly? Well, heat dissipation is the key here. When it's crumpled up, the heat can't effectively escape. Well, according to the manufacturer, the best thing to do is to soak it in a bucket of water, then lay it flat to dry on a hard surface. Typically, I'll skip the bucket of water and just lay it flat on a concrete surface or drape it over a metal container. So that's it, little PSA for the day. And if this video stops just one fire from happening, then it'll be totally worth it. So get out there and make something, just do it safely.